Well, I successfully achieved a milestone. I designed a bare minimum AT Mega 2560 board, which basically is just the AT Mega 2560 and a serial to USB chip and pin headers so that I can program it and use it on a breadboard. Here's a picture of it. And my reflow oven worked. I, I did have some trouble. I used a stencil. I used a plastic stencil. And I had some smearing between pads. And I thought, well, that might not be terrible. So I put it in the oven anyways. And I ended up with some solder bridging. So it took a few hours of solder wicking to get rid of bridging on the 100-pin chip. I'm not happy with that. And I've been spending a lot of time practicing and coming up with a better way to do solder stenciling. But that's the board and the goal for that board. Now the, the overall arching goal here is I'm building a little single board Z80 system and it will use non-volatile static RAM. And instead of using a ROM and RAM EEPROM or whatever RAM combination, I'm just using a 128K by 8 battery backed up static RAM. So they call it non-volatile static RAM. The idea is, is that on a breadboard, I could use the 2560 board I just built to program that memory and then move the chip over to the Z80 board and, and basically bootstrap a, a system. So here is a picture of me using the 2560 on a breadboard and the non-volatile RAM chip and the whole mess of wires that are involved in doing this. Now on the 2560 I wrote a what I'm calling a, a monitor program. It's like all the old-fashioned ROM monitor programs. It lets you examine and set memory and in my case now I can I can download code from from the file, the host machine's file system. I decided to put a Kermit receive implementation on it to do file download. So I'm going back many decades and I'm using Kermit. Kermit turns out to be a really nice terminal emulator and a nice way to transfer files. So the the 2560. I can individually set and examine memory in the non-volatile RAM and I can take a binary file and just load it into the RAM and program it. But that's a mess of wires and my idea of then unplugging the, the RAM and plugging it in the Z80 card doesn't look very practical because it's underneath all those wires. So here I did this. I designed a printed circuit board with female header sockets for the 2560 board and a zero insertion force socket for the memory chip. And this worked first time without any problem. It, the really only components on it are the, the two sockets and three pull-up resistors that are required to prevent it, to prevent it from just doing crazy things. You need pull-up resistors on the control lines, the chip select, the, the write enable, the read enable. So that all worked. And as I said in another video, I'm now very much into Microchip Studio, formerly called At Atmel Studio, and MP Lab X, as opposed to Arduino Land. It's Arduino is not quite right for the kinds of boards I'm going to be building because I may never on some of these boards have USB serial connections on them. So there you go. I hope that's informative and maybe encouraging of people to go off and design their own boards and explore a bigger world of microcontrollers when you can build your own special purpose boards for a specific task and program them and get them working.